Marty is CEO of Topline Corporation. Um, he holds an electrical engineering degree from Cal State Long Beach. He has a number of patents and, and he's gonna further this conversation around um, connecting and, and um, attaching devices, but more importantly, connecting the interconnect. As I think we all understand, the number of bumps on these device parts that we're uh, integrating these days is going through the roof. And we need reliable interconnects um, and uh, micro bumps are nice, but uh, maybe there's better solutions out there. So let's um, hear what Marty has to say. Thank you, Dave, for the introduction. Welcome everyone. And um, big shout out to Alfred. That was really a remarkable um, presentation. I'll be following up with you for sure afterwards. Uh, today, I'm going to um, address ways to make a, those extremely large chips more reliable by using solder columns rather than solder balls as an interconnect between the bottom side of the chip and the PC board. Um, here's a fun fact to start with. Solder columns were originally invented uh, almost 10 years before the solder ball. So way back in, in the days when IBM was king, uh, they were using uh, column grid arrays rather than solder balls because there were no solder balls until at and uh, invented it some years later. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that tin lead uh, solder columns have been in use a good 40 years and is, is the go-to interconnect for high reliable applications, especially in defense and in space. Um, the challenge, the challenge really is how to make a reliable lead-free Rojas compliant um, solder column. So let's get started. Let's, um, let's start with the premise that solder balls are relatively reliable for small BGA packages small meaning 45 millimeters by 45, maybe even 50 by 50 when they're on a laminate. Uh, ceramic BGAs that are larger than 27 millimeters square are uh, not reliable when using solder ball. Now, as the packages, the laminate and um, organic packages, are trending larger and larger and larger, especially with heterogeneous and 2.5D, 2.5D packaging, the potential for solder balls to fail because of CTE mismatch is really present. Multiple dye in these packages with uh, all kinds of overlapping CTE demands are creating unbelievable stresses inside the package, which then gets transferred down to the PC board. In other words, uh, a failure of, a, of solder balls literally means that it delaminates either from the package or from the PC board. So um, whereas 45 by 45 millimeter, even 50 by 50 millimeter BGA packages uh, were um, the mainstay five years ago, quite you know, relatively reliable for the job it was going to do. The trend now is to get larger and larger and larger packages with more I/O. So you know, think uh, seventy by seventy millimeters, ninety by ninety, a hundred by hundred. I've I've actually uh, uh, seen some uh, preliminary designs for hundred and twenty millimeter by hundred and twenty millimeter packages that are being used or plan to use for these hyperscale uh, data centers. So larger size, more solder balls uh, means more potential for failures. Now to uh, mitigate, you know, all these stresses inside of the, these extremely large packages, design engineers, you know, they have uh, well used design tricks, um, for copper balancing, a mix of different, you know, low CTE organic materials to match 
uh, more closely the dye, which then of course means it's less, <laughs> less close to mounting on the board because that has a different CTE, but the use of stiffeners and other secret sauces. So um, one more design factor for design product, uh, package designers would be to use solder columns instead of solder balls to relieve those nagging uh, stress points and to you know tame destructive uh, stresses inside the package. So uh, as I mentioned before, legacy, you know, tin lead, meaning usually it's a high melting point uh, lead with a little bit of solder. Uh, columns have been uh, being used in the aerospace and the uh, defense industry for a lot of years for large ceramic packages and ASICs. So the, the next generation here to make a packet to make a interconnect, a column interconnect um, more readily desirable in the market, we have to go lead free uh, to be Rojas compliant. And that in itself, because the materials really um, creates a whole issue by itself. So we are uh, in development of lead-free solder columns, and we can talk a little bit more about when engineering samples will be available. Um, well, okay, so engineering samples will be available in the next few months. Uh, production samples give us to January, February, March of next year to be in production mode for lead-free. Uh, just as, a thought, it, as an aside, we are in production mode of tin lead solder columns and uh, able to support the market with um, the tin lead version. So what's so special about lead free solder columns is that we place an exoskeleton copper rated sleeve around the, the um, solder core, a lead free solder core, and that sleeve actually holds the column in place so it does not collapse and that it can be reflowed to the chip and then on a secondary process reflowed to the PC board. So that is kind of in a nutshell, the secret sauce on how we can make a lead free uh, solder column. Uh, just also, I wanted to mention that uh, other uses for our braided solder columns we, we see a need uh, for superconducting connections at cryogenic temperatures. Uh, there seems to be a, a lot of interest by some of the big data center companies in how to use their chips at near uh, zero Kelvin. I mean, near, but not exactly zero. It's still very, very cold. And we're talking like minus 200, 270 degrees. Uh, and there are some material sets that we will start working with, uh, basically indium and niobium, to make solder columns uh, for cryogenic temperatures. Okay, so here's a, a view of what a braided solder column looks like. Uh, obviously, it's cylindrical. It's long. Uh, if I can direct your attention to the right side of the screen, uh, there are 16 strands of one mil copper or 25 micron <clears throat> diameter copper uh, around the solder core, <clears throat> a lead-free solder core. And we're showing it here uh, before we coat the column so that you can see what it looks like after it's coated. Uh, you can't see all that detail. And um, that's a pot of 200 times magnification of the actual column. On the left side of the screen, there's a column that's actually mounted on a penny to give you a just a relative a, a size. Now, that is the largest column we make. We make a lot smaller columns. Um, so that just kind of gives you a, a feel for what a column, a braided column would look like before it is connected to a substrate. Artie, what's the minimum diameter that you might be able to achieve or that you have achieved? Right now, 250 microns, which is 10 mils. Okay. And uh, I'll be speaking a little bit 
more about that. Actually, let me let me talk, tell you now because that's a good question. Geometry wise, um, columns tend to be in the aerospace defense industry a little over two millimeters tall. But for commercial use, and, and there's no reason why they have to be that tall. But IBM set some kind of standard 45 years ago, and everyone's following that 2.2 millimeter standard. In reality, a column can be shorter in length, let's say one millimeter, and we've made those, and even shorter. Diameter-wise, when you start stacking up the diameter of the core, and then you add the thickness of the copper, which is braided, and it overlaps each other, so you have to multiply the thickness of the copper by four to get the total diameter of the, cop of the column, you can see that uh, dimensions become critical. So 10 mil diameter, um, 250 micron is the minimum practical use uh, at this point. And we think we can get down to 200 micron diameter or eight mil in the future. So uh, directing your attention to this photo, notice at the bottom of each column, there is a, nine, a, a nice conical looking um, fillet. And that is uh, like a SAC 305 uh, or other type of lead-free fillet that's holding down, holding the column in place. Uh, of particular interest is that um, the design uh, rule is that the column must be smaller than the pad on the chip. Um, so the, the diameter of the column is roughly 70 or 75% of the diameter of the pad, and which creates this nice conical fillet that holds the column in place on the chip. Now, when the uh, chip is mounted onto a PC board, again, it will be uh, mounted with a uh, stack type of uh, solder paste, and there will be another conical fillet on the opposite or the free end of the uh, column. Let's... How how do all these columns get positioned and, and placed yes. on the park? Okay, so we, along with the columns, we also manufacture tool sets and there's literally uh, made out of graphite because it works really well. It matches the CTE well of, of the chip. It also is strong, durable, machinable. So we mechanically drill holes in a graphite plate, which is then held in place with fixtures. And uh, a column is literally deposited uh, through the graphite into solder paste where the chip is and held down with the tamping tool to push the column into the paste. So it's it's not trivial, like, uh, you know, you can actually attach a solder ball with your eyes closed, but columns is a little bit more challenging and and uh, to attach the, the, uh, the column to uh, the chip. And then it all goes through the reflow oven, uh, the, 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 the graphite the columns, the chip goes through a, uh, we, we use, vacuum phase reflow oven, and uh, you can also use uh, you know, vapor phase. There, you can use literally any type of oven as long as you have good control of the, the profile. Okay. Um, we did some finite element analysis to be able to demonstrate um, the obvious stresses comparing a solder column with a solder ball. So uh, the key here is to look for yellows, little bits of reds, uh, greens, and light blues. When you see a light blue, there's, that means that there is some stress. If you see yellows, there's starting to be quite a bit of stress, and that's evident uh, on a solder ball. Uh, on the right side, it shows the solder column with a lot more blues in it. So on a relative basis, uh, our finite element analysis shows that there's less stress. As you, we would expect, actually, uh, in a column, it's, it's like palm trees blowing in the wind. 
they can blow, they're compliant, uh, and um, they don't break. Here are the main benefits of um, using a braided solder column as opposed to a solder ball. Uh, as I mentioned before, columns are uh, non-collapsible, uh, they're compliant, they, and they absorb the package or the strain coming from the package, the chip, between the chip and the PC board. Whereas balls are designed to collapse, that's how they're, they're done. And under um, stresses, they can fail, especially as the package gets larger and larger. Uh, our braided columns have a unique um, system of 16 strands of copper, which creates a sleeve construction. It holds the solder in place, prevents the um, any collapsing. Uh, the other uh, benefit of the uh, copper is that it has a lower thermal impedance. So it has the potential to uh, reduce the need for a large heat sink on top of the package. If you're able to remove, the premise here is if you can remove the heat from under the package through the column and deposit the heat into ground plane layers of the PC board, you may have the potential to reduce the uh, overall mass uh, weight of packages, which uh, especially for satellite operations, uh, it matters. And for ground-based data centers, uh, potentially the, the enclosures can get smaller if the chips are smaller. Um, and lastly, and when, which is the most important, is that columns reduce the stress they actually absorb the stress between the package and the PC board. So here's my last slide uh, before we open it for questions. But the takeaway of, of all of this is um, to know that the market trend is scaling up for larger and larger uh, packages um, and that uh, braided solder columns instead of solder balls can provide significantly a significant uh, reduction or differential benefit for reducing stress, resulting in increased package uh, stability and reliability. And that's my presentation, opening up for questions. Go ahead, Dave. Thank you, Marty. Um, is there a polymer collar that might be used to strengthen the thermal mechanical performance? Good question. We actually uh, are experimenting with a polymer core oh. and to put copper, our copper braid around the polymer core and then to solder coat the whole outside. So, um, but I, I like the, that, the way you're thinking uh, on the polymer, I think there's some benefits and we'd like to um, move forward in our uh, experimentation on using polymers. So there's multiple questions about the coplanarity of what you do and, and the positional accuracy. Okay, good. Um, all the columns after going through reflow are then put into a secondary operation of planarization. So we literally, um, under a very controlled way, hold, hold the columns in place and grind off one, two, three mils off the tops of all of the columns, which makes them almost dead nuts uh, planner. So uh, and that's how it's done. So if there are variations in the package, and there definitely usually are, uh, by planarizing the columns, we can achieve uh, planarization one, one and a half mils, which far exceeds uh, the guidelines of um, Jetic and the other in the community. Cool. And, and how does that, I mean, it sounds like that coplanarity would be much better than co normal balls would be, I'm guessing. Uh, yes. I, I, we've, <laughs> we, we often wonder why people don't planarize solder balls, which can be done and we've done it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, it, it's a requirement. For solder columns, it's always been a requirement and, and part of the tool sets that we offer uh, to, uh, to customers if they want to attach their own columns, or we will do the column attach um, for them as a service. 
And sort of a bottom line question, how does the cost compare between this and a, and a solder ball? Okay, well, there's a lot more steps in attaching, in, in producing a column. So the, the price is significantly higher just comparing a single column to a, to a single solder ball. However, as compared to the, act, the total cost of the package, it is higher. And uh, the question is, uh, you know, the, the total cost of ownership <laughs> to have a, worth it. Yeah. sales or pay a little bit more upfront and have a package that will uh, survive many thermal cycles. Very good. I thank our sponsors, including Adventist, who's received the highest industry scores in terms of customer satisfaction survey from Test Insight, ranking as the number one large supplier of chip making equipment. And I also want to thank Omcor and Cadence for sponsoring this event and their sponsorship has enabled us to make these events free. So when you have an opportunity, please thank them for sponsoring MEPTEC. And once again, I want to thank all of you for joining us, and I look forward to seeing everyone tomorrow. Thank you.